So ladies and gentlemen, as you've seen out there in the garden, and you've, you've heard everything, you've seen it all being grown, it's a matter of how, does, how do you set up a hydrobotic system? When people come into the store here, it's really hard to explain on the basis that it's so simple that it's very hard for you to imagine how simple it really is to grow. Basically, the bottom line for hydroponics, there are several aspects. The aspects are, you need a media to grow it in. Now today, I'm filling this up with expanded clay. Expanded clay is basically clay balls. And you'll see everything's growing in expanded clay. It has a, it's an ability to hold the water on its area. So it's a large surface area. So any of your nutrient that you give it and any of your water stays close to the roots and it absorbs and wick systems the, the water up into your root base. But the roots manage to circle themselves around each of these to be able to get to nutrient. So it's one aspect of hydroponics is the media that you use. And you can use this, you can use perlite, or you can use perlite and vermiculite. There are a couple of other products. We've got them all down in the corner there so that you are able to see the difference. But I would suggest just to start off, just expanded clay. Expanded clay is wonderful because you can keep using it over and over again. All you've got to do is, once this is exhausted, you'll put this out, tip this out onto the ground on a, on a um, weed matting or something, let it dry out, pick out all the bits of root matter, and then put it back in again. So it's quite an effective product, and the product that we sell lasts forever. A word of warning, if you're going to do this under your pergola, make sure you pick it up afterwards rather than when you're going out to the washing line and you step on one of these with bare feet. Hurts like hell, so just a word of warning. How do I know that? So I've done it so often. So that's aspect number one. Aspect number two is the container that you use. This container is just core flute, but you can use a bucket. You can use any form of container where you're able to put water in one end and it's gonna drain out the other. Not rocket science. This is one of our more simple systems to, to make it work. Uh, we, we make this here, we make these up, but you can buy the raw product here and make it up yourself. Very, very simple. And you can make this, these are 1.8, you can make it as, uh, as long or as short as you want, or as deep as you want. So this size, which is 100 mil deep, suits most plants. You won't need to go, unless you want to grow, and Delia will show you afterwards, the more uh, deeper rooted plants, well then of course you go a, deep, a deeper system. But basically it's pretty much the same. So then, then you've got that. Then you've got to have the water delivery system. Basically a pump. A pump connected to a pipe. That pipe then runs, and I'll connect this up to show you, but it goes from one end to the other and, dra and drains out into your system, runs down, and the key to this one is if you have a look at here, here is your drain system there. So your drainage system has the hole there that runs down. This is the key. If you've got seedlings or in summer, when your plant is really, dr there's a, a, a high demand for water, you can have that height. If you don't need to, and in winter time, you don't need a, a water drenched surface, you can just separate this and put that in there as one, okay? So we do that, you can do that as many times. So if you want to buy, build one of these yourself and you want to make it that high, well, that's easy. You just put more of these extensions onto the top. So you think about what it is that you want to grow. If it's just simply tomato plants, cucumber, capsicum, lettuce, that will all grow nicely in this type of system. So the water delivery is just through a via a pump. Now, what do you put inside your reservoir? Thank you, give that man a prize. So in your reservoir, the key to that is to know how much 
believe me, this is a trick that is so important. You need to know how much water is in your 60 litre container. The reason for that is most nutrients say put in two mil per litre. So if you, for the first time, you go, I'm really keen here, I've got a litre bucket and I'm going to measure 40 litre buckets to go in here. And then it drops down you think, oh, now how much have I got in it? The best thing is when you get it to the height that you want, put a stick in it and mark the top of the water level so that when you come to fill it up again, you just fill it up to that water level and you've got 40 litres. It's much an e easier sort of situation. So that when it comes time to put your nutrient in, then you can measure it up quite simply. Now, the nutrient that I'm, I'm just using to demonstrate is this nutrient here. This is a very basic nutrient. It's a one part, so you get, a, you get two part systems or a one part system. This has everything in it that you need. And, you, and, and because of that, you just gotta make sure that it's well um, shaken, but not stirred, of course. And so what you do is this here says for a quarter strength, uh, five mil per litre. For a top strength, which is when your plants are fully growing, you will see that it um, is 10 mil per litre, which is basically a capful. How hard is it? Well, it's one capful per litre. I know because I've got my stick that it's 40 mils. No prize for guessing how many capfuls I need if I've got 40, 40 litres of water and I need a capful per litre. So that's all that's a case of doing. Now, simply, if you're starting off, that's all you need to think about is 10 mil per litre into a 40 litre bucket and run that through. That's your simple way of doing it. Now, if you want to go to the next level, you will, once you connect this up and this is flowing, you can do this and run this all the time. But our system out there runs 15 minutes every hour. When you talk about uh, doing it professionally, you can feed them just after sunrise and you stop feeding them just before sunset because the plant feeds during the light period and you don't want the roots to be sitting in the dark, in, in a water drenched media at night. So it makes sense. The next step is to work out how much runoff you get. You want to make sure that you plant, your plants get just enough water, but no more than that. So they work on 20% runoff. What you, that is a little bit further down the track when you've got pots and so forth, you can work on that. But on a basic system like this, 15 minutes every hour is a good enough uh, way to do it. So what I'll show you is I'll put that in there. So let me do those steps um, now that you know what they are. Here's the expanded clay. So I would, I would put my expanded clay in there. You can, I think in the other demonstrations, the guys have shown you how to wash it out. But basically in a bag like this, put a hole at one end, hole at the other, put your hose in there and let the water run through before it all runs everywhere. Once that's done, you're then able to do it. Put your clay in here, yeah? So once that you get that, then you have a pump. And in this system here, you just are able to put that pump inside there, connect your pump. Now, I'm, I'm making it look easy because I prepared it because I knew I was going to be doing this. But that's the end of the pump, that fitting that they give you, and that's going to be inside that. Now, by rights, I should be able to put this in and it should start. If it... It starts. There's your watering system there running out. Once you've got it running all over the floor, you know that it's working. So that, that is now going to end up running back and draining into the bucket reservoir. That is really the essentially the, the basic part of doing it. Once that's running, I would put some nutrient in and I would, I would use this, just a, just a cap full. 
Okay, so I don't, I will work out how many. I haven't measured how much, I think it's 18 litres um, in there. But I would measure that. The next step, and this is the most important, a plant will only consume water and is only able to access the nutrients that this has, and there's the list of the nutrients, which is basically anything that a plant tries to get out of soil, but we're giving it in a liquid form. So that's nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, uh, potassium, and a whole range of the micronutrients. So each plant has a different requirement, just as each child has a different requirement of their food. So you wouldn't give a teenager the same as what you feed a, a baby. And it's the same with plants. Certain plants require different levels of nutrient. So a tomato requires quite a high level of nutrient compared to, say, a lettuce. How do you know what strength your nutrient is? We have, and it's a good question, I'm glad you asked. We have, and most places have, basically a little uh, digital reader. And this digital reader will read and tell you a measurement. Now don't get caught up on the type of me measurement. Basically, this will give you a, a, a figure. This will give me, when I put that in there, that will give me a figure of about one or 10, 10, one, one zero. And that will tell me that it's a light nutrient. It's only a light mix. A tomato needs, needs between two and four or 20 to 40, depending on the, your measurement. This is the thing that will tell you so that instead of emptying out your water every time to put a new nutrient mix in, you can just put this in and go, okay, it's low. I can just put a cap full in. You measure it again and you know you want to get it to 18, put another cap full in, twirl it around, it'll get to 14. You go, all right, I need to do it again. So that you get a full amount of nutrient in your water. Then you know your plant's always going to be getting the right amount, which is not like you do when you're in soil, when you don't know what's in your soil to, for your plant to survive on. So this allows you to make sure you give the right amount of nutrient to the water. Now you've heard the whole concept of hard and soft water which is basically a, an indication of the, the pH level. So out the water that comes out of our tap is about, if you measure it, it's about pH of about eight, or well, mine is at my home. That's because it's got uh, all the product in it that is good for our public health, but not for, the, for necessarily for plants. A plant will access the nutrients only when your water is at the correct pH level. What's the correct pH level for a plant? Can anyone tell me? Seven, eight. Six, good though. Six, six is a sort of a goal, it is that sort of golden line. You can go from 5.5, you can go up to 6.5, but if you aim for six, you'll be a little bit above and a little bit below, your plant ain't gonna complain. But aim for around six. So how do you know what your pH of your water is? Glad you asked, because I've got a pH meter, pretty much the same as those ones. And these, var these vary in complexity and um, how they, um, how they, you've got to calibrate these to make sure they're right. And I've checked these today. It takes about five seconds to do. So I'm going to put my meter inside my water here and it's going to tell me that this is rainwater with a little bit of nutrient in it and the pH of rainwater is roughly seven. It's roughly seven. That's why it's always good to drink rainwater. When you drink water out of your tap, you're drinking uh, water that's around eight. Rainwater is better. So that, that there is about 7.3. So that's, that's, that's pretty normal for rainwater. So you need to get that up and down. We have, we, there's products around. One drop per litre drops your, your water 
up and down depending on where you want to get it to. And they are the only two maintenance issues that you would need to keep an eye on to set up your hydroponic system. That is EC, which is your, the EC is just a term for electrical conductivity, not a, a flash word, but it just says how much food is in your water. And pH, which is the uh, hardness or the softness of your water to allow your plants to access the nutrient that you put in it. So that's pretty much it. So I want you to understand though, to grasp the concept of hydroponics is not only looking at the system, but looking at the concept. And the concept is to basically find a media that's going to hold your moisture and for allow, uh, allow your plant to spread out and grow. Also to find a system that you can water and return that water back into the reservoir and find a good nutrient. Now, of course, to find a good nutrient in a shop like this is very simple because we have got a very basic one-stop type of product, which is very easy. Agricultural grade, perfect for growing all your vegetables. Right up to the very leading brands on the cutting edge of indoor growing. And it just depends on where you want to go. But essentially for, for veggies, you can't get much past this sort of stuff, okay? You'll notice that this says agro grow and the other one says agro bloom. There are two types of nutrients that you can use. If a plant is just starting to grow, it needs an abundance of nitrogen above all else. And an agro grow has more nitrogen. If your plant is going into a blooming stage, which means it's producing its fruit, then it needs a little bit more potassium. Oh, well, we've got, and here's one that my, uh, I would have preferred a bikini sort of person, but, but I just got my boss instead, but, um, and that's the bloom. So you've got agro grow and agro bloom. The bloom has got more fo uh, potassium and phosphorus in it to enable it to produce its fruit. But this for the nitrogen to get it going. A good mix of both. Some to, we out, outside there, we use a good combination of, of uh, agro grow or agro bloom. We mix it up, there is really no difference. When you're growing in this sort of situation, what you will do is you will put a couple of tomato plants there and then you'll, you'll sprinkle, which we did, we've done on numerous occasions, um, spinach se uh, seeds along here. And then you'll put some strawberries and then you'll put some capsicum and you'll put a couple of other things. They will all grow, but they all require a different rate or a different source of food. What you do is you'll find a happy medium because even at its lowest point, you're still giving that plant more than your gutless ground black sand will do. And so they still will survive. We do that outside. We give it an average and that average does everything. As you can see, it works. So that's pretty much it when it comes to setting up. Just a word of, and then to plant, I suppose. The other word of warning is, when you get this system, it will grow out of control. I, I've set numerous ones of these up and it just grows and it's very hard to imagine how at the beginning that it would go. Now, how do I plant something? Very simply, and, and it's almost embarrassing to actually explain it, is that you actually just push the, seedling, the, the expanded clay aside, lay the roots down, be gentle because these roots, although you can't see it, have got very fine hairs and it's the fine hairs that access, into, access the nutrient. So you basically put it aside, drop this in there and then put your expanded clay around it. So from, from here to here, 600, about 600, 500, me, 500 mil, 50 centimetres, half a metre, whatever you want to choose, to give it like that. You, we sell things that allow a string to come from under, up above that you can string this up as you go along and support it as it goes. Now, I've known these plant, uh, just a tomato plant to grow as out there, you can see that it grows two metres long. To get to its height, then it turns around, you can grow it another two metres down. I've known them to grow on a string 
nine metres long. And at the end of that nine metre vine, you're already still getting tomato plant, uh, tomatoes from it. So it's a very versatile manner of growing. Um, that's, pretty mu that's pretty much it. The other thing you'll find is when this happens, these plants talk to each other via the roots and they exchange the nutrients. So if one's short of one nutrient, another plant will exchange it. It works really well. When you come to take these out, you will find that they're all mixed together. So they work really well together. So don't ever worry about putting different types of species of plants in together because it works very, very well.